Good morning, everyone, and welcome, welcome, welcome. It is good to see all of you as we gather on this 22nd day of September, this 18th Sunday after Pentecost. Please stand. We like to welcome those who have gathered with us this morning live via live stream for today's service. We pray that this service will be a blessing to you. Let us pray. O God, for as much as without you we are unable to serve and please you, mercifully grant that your Holy Spirit may in this our act of worship, in our lives and in all that we do, direct and rule our hearts through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our opening sentence comes to us from the letter of Paul to the Thessalonians. God has called us through the gospel so that we may obtain the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. Our processional hymn, Now that the daylight fills the sky, Once again, everyone, and welcome as we gather on this 18th Sunday after Pentecost. Our little ones will remember that last week Sunday school resumed, and so I will invite uh, all of the young ones to go down 
uh, to Sunday School. Miss Vanella is waiting with bated breath for all of you. Uh, so please do go down and join her. We continue our service with the greeting. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. We pray together, Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord have, mercy. Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, you have created the heavens and the earth and ourselves in your image. Teach us to discern your hand in all your works and to serve you with reverence and thanksgiving. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for the readings from Holy Scripture. A reading from Proverbs, chapter 31, verse 10 to 31. A capable wife who can find. She is far more precious than jewels. The heart of her husband trusts in her, and he will have no lack of gain. She does him good and not harm all the days of her life. She seeks wool and flax and works with willing hands. She is the like sheep of the merchants. She brings her food from far away. She rises while it is still night and provides food for her household and tax for her servant girls. She considers a field and buys it. With the fruit of her hand, she plants a vineyard. She gets herself with strength and makes her arms strong. She perceives that her merchandise is profitable. Her lamp does not go out at night. She puts her hands to the distaff, and her hands hold the spindle. She opens her hand to the poor and reaches out her hands to the needy. She is not afraid for her household when it snows, for all her household are clothed in crimson. She makes herself covers. Her clothing is fine linen and purple. Her husband is known in the city gates, taking his seat among the elders of the land. She makes linen garments and sells them. She supplies the merchants with sashes. Strength and dignity are her clothing. 
and she laughs at the time to come. She opens her mouth with wisdom, and the teaching of kindness is on her tongue. She looks well to the ways of her household and does not eat the bread of idleness. Her children rise up and call her happy, her husband too, and he praises her. Many women have done excellently, but you surpass them all. Charm is deceitful and beauty is vain, but a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. Give her share in the fruit of her hands, and let her words praise her in the city gates. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please remain seated as we recite together Psalm number one. Psalm number one. The psalmist writes, Happy are they who have not walked in the counsel of the wicked, nor lingered in the way of sinners, nor sat in the seats of the scornful. Their delight is in the law of the Lord, and they meditate on his law day and night. They are like trees planted by streams of water, bearing fruit in due season, with leaves that do not wither. Everything they do shall prosper. It is not so with the wicked, they are like chaff which the wind blows away. Therefore the wicked shall not stand upright when judgment comes, nor the sinner in the counsel of the righteous. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked is doomed. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and it shall be forever. Amen. We remain seated for the second reading. A reading from the book of James, chapter 3, verse 13, chapter 4, verse 3, 7, and 8a. Who is wise and understanding among you? Show by your good life that your works are done with gentleness born of wisdom. But if you, if you have bitter envy and selfish ambition in your hearts, do not be boastful and false to the truth. Such wisdom does not come down from above, but is earthly, unspiritual, devilish. For where there is envy and selfish ambition, there will also be disorder and wickedness of every kind. But the wisdom from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, willing to yield, full of mercy and good fruits, without a trace of partiality or hypocrisy. And the harvest of righteousness is sown in peace for those who make peace. Those conflicts and disputes among you where do they come from? Do they not come from your cravings that are at war within you? You want something and do not have it, so you commit murder. And you covet something and cannot obtain it, so you engage in disputes and conflicts. You do not have because you do not ask. You ask and do not receive because you act wrongly in order to spend what you get on your pleasures. Submit yourself, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We stand as we sing the gradual hymn, Christ is made the sure foundation, hymn number 403 in the blue hymnal. Please stand.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Mark chapter 9, reading from verse 30 to 37. They went on from there and passed through Galilee. Jesus did not want anyone to know it, for he was teaching his disciples, saying to them, The Son of Man is to be betrayed into human hands, and they will kill him. And three days after being killed, he will rise again. But they did not understand what he was saying and were afraid to ask him. Then they came to Capernaum, and when he was in the house, he asked them, What were you arguing about on the way? But they were silent, for on the way they had argued with one another who was the greatest. He sat down, called the twelve, and said to them, Whoever wants to be first must be last of all and servant of all. Then he took a little child and put it among them, and taking it in his arms, he said to them, Whoever welcomes one such child in my name welcomes me, and whoever welcomes me welcomes not me, but the one who sent me. This is the Gospel of Christ. God grant that in the written word and through the spoken and proclaimed word we may perceive you the one who is the living word. Lord, write your goodness at the center of our lives. Write your truth at the center of our being. May I speak to you in the name of God who is Father and the Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. Some words from Mark's Gospel, chapter 9 and verse 35. There we are told that Jesus sat down and called the twelve and said to them, Whoever wants to be first must be last of all and servant of all. Whoever wants to be first must be last of all and servant of all. In listening to these passages of scripture for today, we are able to sense, as I'm sure you will agree, that there's something profoundly beautiful and true about the readings that we've heard today. The writer of Proverbs says, charm is deceitful and beauty is vain. And he says, but a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. And then speaking to those who are righteous, the psalmist says, their delight is in the law of the Lord. 
and on his law they meditate day and night. James, in the epistle for today, writes that the wisdom from above is first pure, then peaceable, then gentle, willing to yield, he says, full of mercy and of good fruits, without a trace of partiality or hypocrisy. And then Jesus in our gospel says, whoever wants to be first must be last of all and servant of all. And so friends, even if at times we find it difficult to see many of these attractive attributes at work in our own lives, we find that we are still able to discern and say with confidence that, you know, there is something profoundly beautiful, something deeply truthful about these scriptures. And so it raises, or it should raise, the question for us, if we are able to recognize this profound beauty and truth, then what is the standard of beauty and truth by which we are judging and adjudicating these passages? Why do we think that it is beautiful and truthful, like the capable wife or individual, to be diligent, or to be resourceful, to be trustworthy, to be wise in speech, to be a good steward of one's possession? Why do we think that these are good? To be generous to the poor, to give selflessly for the care of those who are in our charge. Why are these good things? Why can't we just think about ourselves? Why do we think it beautiful and truthful, like the psalmist, to meditate on the word of God in order to put down deep spiritual roots in order to grow in righteousness? Why do we think it a good thing to study and to gather to study the Word of God together? Why do we think it a beautiful and good thing like James to live life according to a heavenly wisdom which is characterized by peaceableness within the community of faith? Or why finally do we think it beautiful and truthful and Jesus encouraged his disciples to strive to be last of all. That is, to put one another's needs ahead of our own. To be servant of all. To welcome those who are the least of these. Why do we think those things to be beautiful and true? And friends, I want to suggest that it is because as creatures of the living God, the God who created all things good in the beginning, this standard of goodness, this standard of beauty, this standard of truth has been deeply inscribed in the center of our hearts and the center of our beings. This God who is good, who has made us good, has written his goodness right into the center of our being. And with God's help, with God's help we are enabled to glimpse this goodness, to recognize it from time to time, to glimpse this truth and beauty, whether in passages of scripture like the ones we've heard today, or glimpse it in the world around us, or even if we do it only intermittently and in distorted sort of ways in the things that we encounter, there is a beauty and a truth that is inscribed at the center of all that there is. And this is important to remember, especially as we look around at one another, and we look around at this world that we live in. Sometimes it's hard to see the beauty and the goodness and the truth, but it is written in the center of all that exists. And so perceiving God's hand in beauty and truth, whether through the lens of scripture or in the world around us, whenever we perceive it, I believe it often occurs in very simple and humble and even unassuming ways. And this means that although God's hand is at work among us, we may not always have eyes to see it. We may not always have ears to hear it. We may not always have the kinds of hearts that are needed to be able to understand. And so we might compare this sort of struggle to perceive, this struggle to understand to that patient who is, you know, in hospital, maybe waking up from uh, being under anesthesia. I don't know how many of you have ever been into hospital and have, where we say you had to go under, right? You got a general 
anesthesia and you had to go on. I've had that before myself. And I recall that as I gradually regained consciousness, I mean, besides the foolishness that you sometimes say, right? As I gradually regained consciousness, I did have some lucid moments, right? Where the real world, as it were, seemed to break through into this dreamlike state, this haze of the medicine. And in those moments, I could still recognize the real world. And it made sense to me, perfect sense. But the powerful drugs that were still in my system made it a reality that after I thought about it in hindsight, it seemed a bit fuzzy. What was that that you really saw? What was that that you really thought you understood? And I believe that in a similar way, the true reality of God's beauty and his goodness and God's truth, it breaks into our lives and reveals, reveals our false realities in ways that we can often perceive and understand it. It gives us a contrast. It makes our hearts burn within us as it did for the disciples on the road to Emmaus. Even if later on when we think about those times, it may seem distorted, it may seem fuzzy, it may get fuzzy because of the things that concern us in this life. Yet the question remains, what kind of God would leave a measure of his goodness and his beauty and his truth so indelibly inscribed within every aspect of his creation and then enable us to perceive it, allow us to be able to see it, what kind of God does that? And friends, I believe that it is a God who wants us to know that we are not alone in this world. This is a God who wants us to know that we need not wander about aimlessly as if without direction. This is a God who wants us to connect with him deeply and to relate to him in a way that we will know that it is indeed him. Such that having acknowledged him, we would then willingly and thankfully and reverently and obediently follow the sound of his voice in our lives in this world as he leads us into this way of truth and life. It is as if God has left us clues. He has left his thumbprint, his fingerprint, so that we may see and recognize the stamp of his beauty and truth on all creation. And friends, this way of truth and life is a way of life which is fleshed out only as we follow him, only as we walk by faith. It is a way of life which often requires more listening and following and less talking and directing. I asked the congregation this morning if they remember the parable of the two sons where the father sends them out into his vineyard, the first son says, yes, father, I will go, and he never went. And the second son says, I am not going, but he is the one who actually came to his senses, and he went. And that is what God requires of us, right? I mean, words are one thing, but God requires that we follow. That is how we grow in the faith. We often cannot trust our own seeing or the choices that are before us because things are often not as they appear. And so we learn by following. And today's scriptures, I believe, invite us to a fundamental and primary submission and following of God. A submission which may be likened to the dying of a single grain of wheat in order that it might bear and so the epistle and the gospel in particular show us how this truth of God which is made known to us in Christ, this truth which is at the center of creation, this truth which is at the center of our lives, it shows us how this is in all actuality the true standard and mark in accordance with which everything else in all creation will be judged. In other words, the mark that Christ has put in our hearts is the mark by which all creation will be judged. James realized that his community, this gathered community of believers, shouldn't be characterized as they were by conflicts and disputes, 
right? That's what they had because everyone was after their own agenda. Everyone was competing with everyone else. James could perceive and understand this because Christ, as the manifestation of wisdom from above, was not only the standard by which their lives were being reoriented and rejudged, but also the means whereby all their hidden motivations had been revealed. In Christ, all the blinders were taken off. And so according to this new orientation, they had been turned away from a life of self-seeking, turned instead towards Jesus Christ. And therefore that neighbor, that one sitting next to them in the pew, that one next to them on their job, was no longer a competitor to strive against, but had become a brother or sister in Christ, a mother or father in Christ, had become a part of their family, one for whom Christ had died. And for this reason, things like selfish ambition could not remain the driving force of their lives. Because all that did was lead to strife and disputes and conflicts and war. Instead, they were now called to devote themselves to serving one another, to helping their new family members in Christ. And so James admonished this new body of believers to submit themselves to God, to draw near to God, knowing that God would also draw near to them. And that is the call for all of us, friends. And so we, right, as believers, we always have to ask, where then do we perceive and understand greatness, right? How do we figure it out? In today's gospel, Jesus predicts his own death at human hands, and he does this a number of times. But he also will predict his victory over death three days later. But the disciples don't get it. It still, it still seems confusing. But following the disciples' argument amongst themselves, they're bickering about who is the greatest. Jesus, the master teacher, he takes the child, a tangible symbol of powerlessness and vulnerability, and he places it in their midst. And he tells them to welcome such powerlessness, welcome such vulnerability in his name. Because when you do that, you don't just welcome him, but you welcome the one who sent him. So on the cross, in the seeming powerlessness and vulnerability that was displayed, God in Christ served all humanity. He served us all. And his resurrection from the dead, it vindicated and revealed this loving and willing and selfless act of God on our behalf as true greatness. No greater love has anyone than this, than to lay down one's life for his friend. So on the cross, we see what God is like. On the cross, Christ reorients us so that we may come to perceive what true greatness really is. If you ask the world, what does it mean to be great? People will say, oh, when you have this, or when you live there, or when you have this kind of job, or wear this kind of clothes, or know these kinds of people. We point to the cross. That is true greatness. And so the simple point I make is that the truth that is Jesus Christ at the center of creation, at the center of our being, it calls into question, friends, everything else which will seek to exert and exalt itself against that truth. And the church down through the ages has right, continued to find itself in all sorts of different cultures and contexts, pressed by all kinds of ideologies, oftentimes struggling to stay awake. Right? We look to our neighbors to the south, even right here, Everyone claims to be a believer, but everyone is holding to very different ideologies, doing very different things. You yourself will meet up with all sorts of different circumstances. This life, friends, is complicated. It is not just flat. But in the midst of it all, 
what is required of us always remains the same. That is to hear and to follow God's still, small voice in accordance with the standard of Christ's own life. Right? We are called to become more Christ-like, to remain faithful to his truth that is at the center of our lives. And so in every circumstance, rather than being given specific things to do, sometimes we think that Christianity is a list of do's and don'ts, right? Rather than being given specific things to do, we are reoriented toward Christ as the only true standard of truth and beauty. And Christ beckons us to follow him into this world. And with the guidance of the Holy Spirit, we are led into all the truth about this new way of being. That is, it is a way of being in this world, but yet not of it. People should look at you and say, what a strange person, right? Not because of what you wear or because of how you speak, but because of the way you live. True fellowship and communion to which God invites each and every one of us, even from the center of our being, is characterized by us manifesting this deep and profound beauty and truth in all that we do. And so my prayer for all of us this day, friends, is that we hear God's call upon our lives, that we lean into this beckoning towards beauty and truth, that we follow him as he leads, because in so doing, God is drawing the whole world to himself. And so wherever God has placed you, I encourage you to lean into that way of being. God is drawing the whole world to himself, saving it, he's redeeming it, he's renewing it. Sometimes we don't know. We look out and say, God, what is going on in this world? God is at work. God is at work, bringing the world exactly to where it needs to be in him, often in hidden and mysterious ways. But we trust, we follow, we listen, and we do. Amen. Friends, please stand and let us now, in the words of the Apostles' Creed, confess and indeed reaffirm our faith in this God who has inscribed his truth and beauty at the center of our lives and the God who calls us to follow him. As we say together, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, he was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please sit or kneel as you are able as we continue to pray. As we gather fit, as we gather and lift our hearts in prayer,
Give this world the power to follow the master's example. As we gather and lift our hearts in prayer, let us pray with confidence and faith to the living God who, persists, who permits us the deeds of power in Jesus' name, saying, the name of your son, Jesus, is our power. Give this world the power to follow the master's example, to love as he did, to speak as he spoke, to behave as he behaved, so that this world can become more like the world you envision. In the Anglican Church in Canada, we pray for the Right Reverend Clara Plamondon Bishop and for the clergy and people of the territory of the people. Together with the Evangelical Lutheran Church in Canada, we pray for the indigenous children who did not return home from residential school, for survivors and their families, for truth, healing, and reconciliation. In our own Anakin cycle of prayer, we pray for the Church of North, North India United, for its laity, deacons, priests, and bishops. Let us pray, saying, the name, the name of, of your son Jesus, Jesus is, is our power. Give grace to all nations and people of the world that they may perceive your power and respond with love and humility. Let us pray saying, the, the name, name of, of your, your son, son Jesus, Jesus is, is our, our power. power. Give this world the power to act on behalf of your son, to speak the truth in love, to seek out justice with an injustice arises, to discern your will, and to be the living witness of Jesus Christ. We lift up to you the ministry offered through our Saints Cafe, and we thank you for this opportunity for outreach to the poor, hungry, and homeless within our community. Strengthen and encourage our coordinator, volunteers, and all who support this work week by week. We pray for all who receive meals, support, and Christian friendship through the program. Grant that your name may be glorified in all that we do and in the lives of all whom we are privileged to serve, let us pray, saying, The name, the name of, of your Lord Son, Jesus, Jesus, is our power. Give this world the power to honor your Son's name, as we are one family, 
whose successes and achievements reflects that we are sons and daughters of God, brothers and sisters of Jesus, and are the joy of the whole body. We thank you for those who visit or worship with this Christian family week by week. We give you thanks and praise for their presence with us today, and we ask your blessings in a special way on all those visiting us for the first time today, or those returning after the summer break. Continue to draw children, young families, and others seeking you to this community that they might experience your power in their lives. Let us pray, saying, The name, the name of, of your, your Son, Jesus, Jesus is our, our power. Give this world the power of your name, that name that is so powerful it can heal the sick, destroy all evil, give freedom to those in chains, and save each one of us. We lift up before you the following members of our congregations and their caregivers. Carol. Carol. Thelma. Thelma. Maureen. Maureen. Joe. Joe. George. George. Clifton and Pauline. Clifton and Pauline. Kathleen. Kathleen. Ruben. Ruben. Nellie. Nellie. Ne Andrew. Andrew. Carmen. Carmen. Felicia. Felicia. Ian. Ian. Pat. Pat. Paul. Paul. Ethel. Ethel. Doreen. Doreen. Rima. Rima. Hyacinth. Hyacinth. Angela. Angela. Erica. Erica. Rita. Rita. And Dorothy. Dorothy. We pray for those for whom members of this gathered community have asked our prayers, especially Benedict Atu, Ida and Ken Behadu, Glenda Bostick, Thelma Chasto, Daniel Christie, Gary Duncan, Angela Eady, Jason Falbo, Gloria Van Lu, Evelyn Greenwich, Portia, Lansdale Guy, Ruthlyn Hoyt, Ngozi Atu, Iago Iabo Ogondoran, Eric and Family, Gregory Linton, Patrick, Vaughn Martin, Heather Maynard, Joseph Murray, Nicolene Mackey, Carolyn Linton Miller, Reverend Mark Regis, Cindy, Chelsea Kellman, Denzel Austin and the poor Austin Jr., Joy A. God Mighty, Patricia Adams, Angela Popolo, Elizabeth Patton, Eva Manifold and Jermaine, Cora Suave, Valder and Sarita Domingo, Marielle, Marianne and Valerie Walters, Shanice Ashmead, Florence Omogbai, Diane Denny, Alyssa, Athena, Lathoya, and Ovander. We intercede for those on our hearts and minds. We pray, saying, the name of your son, Jesus, is our power. God of unsearchable mystery and light, your weakness is greater than our strength. Your foolishness brings all our cleverness to naught. Your gentleness confounds the power we, we would claim. You call first to be last and last to be first, servant to be leader, and ruler to be underli underling of all. Pour into our hearts the wisdom of your word and spirit that we may know your purpose and live to your glory. 
Amen. Amen. Dear friends, in Christ, God is steadfast in love and infinite in mercy. He welcomes sinners and invites them to his table. Let us therefore confess our sins confident in God's forgiveness. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sin, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Friends, please stand now for the greeting of peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Please pass a sign of peace and greetings to those around us. Friends, please stand as we sing our offertory hymn, My God and Is Thy Table Spread, hymn number 327 in the red hymnal. Please stand.
Let us pray. O God of power, the glory of your works fills us with wonder and awe. Accept our offering this day and help us to live in peace and harmony with all your creation. For the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our service continues with Eucharistic Prayer, Form 3. Eucharistic Prayer, Form 3. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Blessed are you, gracious God, creator of heaven and earth. You are the source of light and life for all your creation. You made us in your own image and call us to new life in Jesus Christ, our Savior. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices to proclaim the glory of your name. Sit or kneel as you are able as we continue to pray. We give thanks to you, Lord our God, for the goodness and love you have made known to us in creation, in calling Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all in the word made flesh, Jesus your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, a death he freely accepted, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. When he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And after supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, Father, according to his command, 
We remember his death. We proclaim his resurrection. We await his coming in glory. And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we, made acceptable in him, may be sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, reconcile all things in Christ and make them new. And bring us to that city of light where you dwell with all your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation by whom, and with whom, and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory are yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Break this bread to share in the body of Christ. We being many are one body, for we all share in the one bread. The gifts of God for you, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy upon us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy upon us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Grant us your peace. Friends, those of all ages and denominations baptized into Christ are welcome to come and to receive communion at the altar today. If you prefer not to receive communion, uh, we would invite you to join us at the table for a blessing. Simply cross your arms in front. Our hymns for communion, Amazing Grace, He Touched Me, O Master, Let Me Walk With Thee.
Friends, as we continue to sing, I would like to invite those who may wish to come forward at this time to pray for a birthday or anniversary or any other need uh, or concern. I'd be happy to pray along with you. That's an intro for those who are coming forward to pray. Hey.
Friends, where you are, I invite you to please stand as we pray together the prayer after communion, as we thank the living and present God for his presence with us and for all that we have brought and all that we have received in this act of Eucharistic worship. We are minded that we worship in the presence of the God who has written his beauty and goodness and truth at the center of all our lives. Let us pray together. Ruler of the universe, all creation yearns for its fulfillment in your Son. May we who have shared in holy things grow into maturity in him. This we ask in the name of the same Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And now may the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God, and of his Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit rest upon you and remain with you this day and always. Amen. Please be seated. Good afternoon, everyone. And welcome, welcome, welcome as we gather on this 18th Sunday after Pentecost. As I said to the early congregation, it is amazing how quickly the time is going by. Very soon we will be at the end of the season of Pentecost and into the season of Advent, all right? Uh, it is coming quickly, and so uh, we give God thanks for this day and this opportunity uh, to gather. And of course, a very warm welcome to anyone who may be uh, visiting with us. As I look out, I see mainly family and friends, except for my two friends at the front here who are not really visitors because we know who they are, right? Um, but we are happy uh, for all those who have joined us today for the service, especially those who are joining us via live stream for today's service. Uh, friends, as we gather uh, this week, our usual weekly offerings uh, continue. We will meet this evening at 6 p.m. for evening prayer, and then again uh, Monday through Friday at 7.15 a.m. for morning prayer. The Tuesday Prayer and Bible Study Fellowship uh, has resumed and will continue this week. And on Thursday, uh, we continue with our study of Job in the Thursday evening Bible study. Uh, for those who are interested, as I promised, the uh, printouts for the study are at the back, so please take them. They have a summary, some questions for you to think about. Uh, if you'd like to join us, even if you would not like to join us, I encourage you to join us. Uh, read Job chapters 1 and 2 as we prepare uh, to study together. We will meet online on Zoom, uh, so please do take the material with you today. All right? uh, lots of things coming up uh, this week. Well, of course, the Saints Cafe will be uh, continuing as usual this week. We are very grateful for this ministry. Uh, please continue to support as you are able. As I say from time to time, if you have the opportunity to be here uh, through the week on a Monday, on a Wednesday, or on a Thursday uh, when deliveries come in, uh, we would be grateful for that help as well. All right. Our parish walkathon is coming up on Saturday, this coming Saturday, the 28th. Okay. What time are we starting? 7 a.m. 7 All right. So please make sure that you are here. All right. Um, my kids are here. See, they're kind of giving me the side eye because I said, I said, would, would you like to go with Daddy to the walkathon on Saturday morning at 7 a.m.? And they're like, no thanks. <laughs> so I rephrased the question. I said, y'all are going with me to the walkathon on Saturday. Is, is that right? See, the head's nodding. Kairos is squinting at me. So I will scrape them up on their beds early on Saturday, and they'll be here. I want to see you too, all right? Don't let it just be me and Doran and Karis and who are, anyone else coming? Mm, wow, I see one. <laughs> I see some waving, I don't know if that's, listen, I will come for you on Sunday if I don't see you on Saturday. Friends, please join us. We start at 7 a.m. We're gonna have the health van here uh, from Black Creek Community Health Center to check blood pressure, blood sugar level, all those things. We have a brunch that is going to be prepared afterwards. Make the effort, okay? Uh, if you are not walking, I encourage you to sponsor someone who is walking. Uh, let's make this event a success, a success that it has been. And all of the funds raised, of course, 
will go to support uh, the small projects that we have highlighted uh, for this time, all right? I have a half a mind to pull out my parish list and start calling folks at about 6.30 on Saturday to make sure they are here at 7 o'clock. Should I? Should I, should I call around? 6, call them at 6. 6.30 might be too late. Thank you, Alan. All right. Maybe I'll call around at 6 o'clock on Saturday. All right, friends, so 7 o'clock. T-shirts are $20. They are available. Uh, please make sure that you get your T-shirt. Uh, this is, of course, one of the events uh, that we are celebrating, uh, using to celebrate our 70th anniversary. Uh, the other is our Evening of Elegance coming up on the 19th, as you all know. Uh, the tickets are going. I had folks this morning who purchased tickets as well. Uh, friends from uh, beyond these four walls who have purchased tickets. Uh, I'm pleased to say that we will also have a live steel pan band playing for us uh, in the evening. Uh, Gemini Pan Groove uh, will be with us um, and a number of other uh, entertainment pieces. So please come on out. What you are getting for your $125 without that seniors discount is a really good deal. All right? So I encourage you to come on out, get your tickets, and be there. You can, some folks have bought a table of eight, and so they get a discount of 10%. If you can find eight people to sit together at your table, it's a smart move. You pay $900, you get a discount uh, of 10% on that ticket. So uh, plan to come. We have uh, Archdeacon Cheryl Palmer, who will be our speaker for the evening. Uh, it's shaping up to be lots of fun, and so I encourage you to be with us uh, on the 19th. All right? Uh, for youth, the, the tickets are $75, and for those 12, 11 and under, uh, you can attend for free. We just need to know that you're coming. All right? Uh, other things, birthdays. We want to pray for those who are celebrating their birthdays this week. Uh, K.O. White celebrates today. Uh, favor, where's Favor? Favor is celebrating. When is your birthday, Favor? On Monday, tomorrow. And how old is Favor going to be? 10. All right, so Favor's turning 10 tomorrow. All right, uh, Wendy, I thought I saw Wendy a moment ago. Wendy, is that Wendy? Yes, Wendy is celebrating along with uh, Patrona Hutchinson and Noel, who will be celebrating on Tuesday, the 24th. Uh, Rona, Rona, where did Rona? Rona's at the back helping with the live stream. Uh, Rona will be celebrating along with Ricardo Walters on Saturday. And I know that there are others who didn't want their names to be called, and that's fine will also be celebrating this week, and so uh, we pray God's blessings for you as you celebrate. Can we sing happy birthday to those who are celebrating? Blessings to you all as you mark this occasion. Favor, I remember when I was 10. It's only a few years ago. My, how the time, <laughs> how the time goes by, all right? Uh, but we pray that it is a fantastic birthday for all of you. All right, friends, uh, please stand as we sing our recessional hymn. All right.
Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.